everyone. Welcome back to IntegralCalc.com. We're going to be doing a Lagrange multiplier problem today. This one asks us to use Lagrange multipliers to find the maximum or minimum points of the following function. The function is f of xy equals x squared plus y squared. And they tell us that it is subject to the constraint um, xy equals 1. The first thing we want to do with this problem, and um, please keep in mind that Lagrange multiplier problems um, seem like a lot of steps and there's a lot of things to do, but it's not complicated and we just have to stick with it, uh, go through the steps, and, um, and we'll get to the right answer. So the first thing that we always want to do is actually convert this. See, we have f of xy equals a function. And then over here we just have an equation. We want to change this so that we get, um, we usually call the constraint equation um, by g instead of f. So g of xy instead of f of xy. We want to convert this so that we have g of xy equals something. And the way that we do that is simply by subtracting 1 from both sides. So, and then writing. So g of xy equals, and we just subtract 1 from both sides. Um, and we get uh, xy minus 1. You can see that we would get xy minus 1 equals 0. We just, um, we just put g of xy in here for 0, and we have this function. So now we have, um, we have two equations, or two functions, f of xy and g of xy, this being the original function and this being the constraint equation. So now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and take partial derivatives with respect to both x and y of both of these functions. And um, if you're confused about partial derivatives or you haven't run into them before, please go ahead and visit the partial derivatives section of my website. Um, and there's a lot of problems there that you can, you can check out. They're usually pretty confusing for a lot of people, myself included, so um, it's a good idea to, to brush up on those. You really need to be solid on those for Lagrange multipliers. So, First, we're going to do partial derivatives of f with respect to x and y. So with respect to x here, uh, the partial derivative with respect to x of x squared is 2x. The y squared will go away because we treat uh, y as a constant. Um, so we can think about it like plugging in a number for y. For example, if we plug in 2 for y, we'd get 2 squared here, that would be 4. Um, and the derivative of any constant is just 0. So if this were 4, the derivative would be 0. Therefore, we know we can cancel the y squared. So it's just 2x. With respect to y, we have the same thing. We treat x as a constant, so this ends up just being a, a constant number, and the derivative is 0. It, it cancels out. And the derivative uh, of y squared here is just 2y. So now that we have that, we go ahead and do the exact same thing with g of xy. So um, partial derivative of g with respect to x and partial derivative of g with respect to y. So with respect to x of this uh, xy minus 1, um, again, we treat when we're taking with respect to x, we treat y as a constant. So pretend that y is the number 2. If y is the number 2, um, we have this xy ends up being 2x, right? Because this is the number 2, it becomes the coefficient on x. So we'd have 2x. The derivative of 2x would just be 2, right? Um, and if the derivative is just 2, remember, y is actually representing 2. So we know that y acts like a coefficient on the x, and the derivative of this term with respect to x is just y. Of course, the 1 goes away because it's just a, a constant, so it cancels. And then same thing here with respect to y. We're treating x as the constant. Um, so pretend that x now is the number 2. We'd have 2y, um, and the derivative of 2y would just be 2, which of course is actually x, right? We, we plugged a 2 in for x. So um, x is acting like the coefficient on the y here. And so the, our derivative with respect to y is just x. And again, the 1 goes away because it's just a constant. 
So now that we've taken um, partial derivatives of both f and g with respect to x and y, um, we have these um, here. We're actually going to set them equal to each other, um, but before we do that, the only thing we have left to do is to add lambda to the end of um, this uh, side of the function here. So, so we add lambda to both of these. Just not plus lambda, just tack it onto the end. So you add it onto the end here, and then because these two are both uh, partial derivatives with respect to x and these two with respect to y, we're going to go ahead and set these two equal to each other and these two equal to each other. So we'll just have, um, let's do it over here, uh, 2x equals y lambda and 2y equals x lambda. Okay, so there's our um, system of equations. Um, so now what we want to do, that we set those equal to each other, is solve both of these for lambda so that ultimately we can set them equal to each other. So the way that we're going to do that, for the first one, we're going to divide, let's just put it down right here, we're going to divide both sides by y. So y will cancel over here on the right, and we'll end up on the left with 2x over y equals lambda. Here, we're going to divide both sides by x, so we'll get uh, 2y over x equals lambda. So we've solved both of these for lambda, and now since they're both equal to lambda, we can go ahead and set them equal to each other. So let's just go ahead here and write uh, 2y over x. So now they are equal to each other. And now that we've set them equal to each other, the last thing that we need to do for this part of the problem is to solve for the simplest relationship that we can between x and y, which will usually look something like, you know, x equals y, um, you know, 3x equals y. Um, we want to simplify the relationship between these as much as possible. So what I'm going to do is first multiply both sides by y. So if I multiply both sides by y, um, y's will cancel over here and we'll get 2x equals 2y squared over x. Then I'll multiply both sides by x so that the x's cancel over here and I'll get 2x squared equals 2y squared. So I hope that you can see now we can divide both sides by 2. The 2's will cancel. We'll get uh, x squared equals y squared. If we take the uh, square root of both of these, um, we will get x equals y. So here is our relationship between x and y. You can't get much simpler than that. So all of this work was so that we could get here, between, so that we could solve for the relationship between x and y. Now that we've done that, what we need to do is find, use this relationship to find um, our points, the points where we may have maxima or, or minima in our problem. So because um, x equals y, and we can go ahead and erase all of this, and let's go ahead and put our relationship right up here, x equals y. All right, so because of this relationship, now we're going to need this uh, constraint equation to come back into play. Because x equals y, we can go ahead and substitute. I'm going to go ahead and plug in um, x for y. So here, right, I have x, and then right here for y, I'm going to plug in x because they're equal to one another. So I have x squared equals 1. So now what I need to do is solve for x. So if I, um, if I solve for x, then I'm going to do the square root of both sides, and I will get x equals uh, the square root of 1.